Hello and welcome to Kid Bashing with Disciple 3D. I am your host, Brent Bowers, also known sometimes as Johnny Brento, but you may know me as Daz Published Artist Graybro in the 3D realms. Today I'm going to be uh, sharing my process for creating a character facsimile for a uh, character from a live action movie. Um, in this case, I'll be working from a property that I actually am co-owner of the rights to. It's called Sea for Chaos. It's a web series that I did with some friends a number of years ago that has a lot of fantical crazed killer characters and supernatural beings in it. So instead of trying to recreate Jason or Ash or Michael Myers, I decided to go with something uh, of my own design so that uh, I wouldn't be breaking any uh, intellectual property laws uh, while doing this. In any case, um, we'll just switch right over and I'll show you the character that we're going to be creating. You have to forgive me if I get this stuff in the wrong order. I definitely um, am flying by the seat of my pants here. The character we're going to be creating is uh, called Double Axe Art. It's a moment in the film where the main character basically uh, is taken over by uh, ancient spirits and becomes a crazed killer for a short time and kills several of his friends with a couple of axes <laughs> before he regains his senses not to spoil anything for you there but um, I wanted to share some source photography that uh, I have for this character just to kind of get you into the um, concept of what the character looked like in the film and then we'll see how I can go about kit bashing to create his outfit since obviously I'm not going to create uh, the specific outfits from the film. A brief lapse of reason there where I forgot where these images were. So um, yeah, so here's what we're looking at and I'll share these in a larger format with you. This is various incarnations of the character in the film. This is the director, my friend Jamie McRoberts aka Strebo Magic. Um, this is the finale look of the character after he's faced off with uh, his nemesis and uh, we really struggled with creating the um, makeup exactly the same on consecutive days uh, this is uh, really kind of like our own little film college and um, we learned as we went along but we did take a lot of reference shots which is why I actually have access to shots that would be perfect to create this character from using Facebook and there they are we took them on the um, the day of shooting originally uh, when we first did this character's makeup and you can see that uh, what you need for a Facebook uh, I'm sorry face gen likeness is a good front on shot with the lips together and the eyes open basically blank expression and then a left and right profile though just one is enough you can flip it in Photoshop or what have you uh, but in this case we got unique profiles so it will be able to create the texture from this um, oh sorry who's that guy <laughs> so here we go so we're gonna just pop over to face gen you can kinda see what I created as a result now I'm not gonna walk you through face gen because there are plenty of uh, tutorials uh, you know how we how we got to this place from uh, starting with the raw photographs um, so um, you know we won't go through that part. I just wanted to illustrate that uh, I had already created the character in Face Gen, and um, we will start in Das Studio with this character essentially loaded. Now I will point out that Face Gen, being that he has a white skin, cre it did create like a texture file for him uh, that was all white. So if you were trying to create some sort of uh, vampire, you know that would be fine. But in the case of our character you can see that he does not have white skin it's just a, intended to be a white face paint so um, it worked out just fine the way it was just changing the face and this wasn't from another character I created so uh, how do we get his outfit and uh, you know I could have went a lot of different ways with this you'll notice that <laughs> his hairstyle that by the way the actor's name is uh, Scott Michael Thomas you can find him on uh, Facebook he's an actor and model and he's done a lot of stuff but a uh, nice guy too uh, but he came down and worked with us for five years on and off for this film so I really appreciate that but you'll notice that his hair has changed drastically and that, that's, that's just par for the course 
if you're in an independent film where you can't really afford to pay people to keep their hair the same way this is what you get and apparently this was a trendy hairstyle at one point but in my way of thinking just to, to read as the character a regular a regular hairstyle will work just fine um, in fact there's times that you see him earlier on where he has a quite normal haircut nothing quite so ostentatious as this so um, to find things to recreate recreate the outfit I just sort of went through Das. Uh, uh, actually in my case I'd already bought all this stuff so I, I didn't have to look too far so there's an outfit that we can basically take pieces of to create his you know basic overcoat and t-shirt look and um, you know obviously this is engineered to look like blade but if you take away the pieces that really move it toward blade you end up with something a little bit more generic like what we had Fraser hair is just a hair that I happen to have uh, and it already is made for the uh, V3 character V3 male chassis and uh, then for the scarf, I found this excellent uh, DM suit for um, Genesis 2 Males and Michael 6 by Mesh It Up. Uh, I'll point out that this is a really cool little product, and um, I got it on sale for a ridiculous price. I, I want to say it was just a few dollars. So, you know, I, I didn't see myself making a shadow comic, but I thought sooner or later that cape's going to come in handy. Uh, or the scarf, and, and who knows, maybe, maybe the hat too. But uh, it comes with a bunch of cool poses as well, so... I like when, uh, also guns, so I, I like when uh, products come with, uh, and it, it's a fair price even, you know, even if at full price, but I never pay full price for anything. So for his axes, the character has some very, he has two different kinds of axes in the film, uh, which we'll go back to the reference pictures. One is just your typical axe, and this is more of like a Viking type battle axe. Let's see if we have another shot of it. You really can't see it from that angle, but it is quite a bit like what I found in the classic Axis pack from Daz Studio and this may have been a freebie at one point I really can't remember if I bought this or not but um here's a good uh, clay render this is the axe that I ended up going with because it was very close to the uh, to the axe that a guy playing a party goer brought as part of his uh, Celtic costume and I said hey can we borrow that for the main character and he was he was uh, agreeable to that, so we ended up getting that cool looking axe, and he went off to prison, <laughs> true story, and uh, left his axe with us, so we ended up, uh, you know, keeping that axe and it becoming a part of the character, and uh, I won't mention the guy's name, but he actually was exonerated after about two years, so I'll just say uh, I'm glad that happened because he's a nice guy. Um, I mean, I'm glad that he was exonerated, not that he went to prison for two years, that completely sucks. Um, so, we're going to build this character out with those items that I just pointed out, and I've actually already done that, <laughs> so instead of you watching me conform all these, everything but uh, the uh, DM suit was made for Genesis 3, so I had to go through the auto-fit uh, sequence with it, but um, I already kind of created this character, and I'm going to just uh, bring that in right now so you can see it, how, what we ended up with. I think it actually turned out really very nice. So there you have it. Uh, and guys, there's so many amazing uh, pose kits out there. You know, if you're trying to create a comic, which is which I often do, it's um, it's very easy uh, to find something that, that kind of. Uh, links up with what you're trying to accomplish with your uh, with your compositions so um, I would just say that uh, unless it's something extremely specific you, chances are like for example double all this double axe action um, in my case I'm not actually trying to recreate like a scene from the film because a lot of that stuff was very very dark but um, these work great you know for random shots of uh, impending axe violence these have worked out very very well um, by the way this is the Valborg poses which originally were made for Michael Ford but I think someone updated them for uh, Genesis 3 so they are very good 
seems like the walking one's quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to save this character preset in my new folder that I've created for characters from the film C for Chaos under Double Axe Art. And I'll just, uh, I could save the scene, but I'm just going to go with character preset. I believe that will load everything. And we'll just call it Double Axe Art. For your edification and mind, let's um, let's reload that from what I just made. Okay, so did, uh, apparently I should have saved it as a um, as a scene to get all the stuff. On. By the way, um. This was a mistake originally, but it doesn't matter because the character is actually um, covered at the legs, but I will go ahead and fix that. Uh, actually, I already have fixed this on the original. I was saving it into a new folder, but just to show you how that goes. Um, go here. Something that's actually set up correctly, like the arms, for example. I'll just use those to not have to go hunting for this folder. Copy that path, and then go down to the legs, and Bob is indeed your uncle. So since I'm here, I think what I'll do is just go ahead and save a raw preset just for the character texture. Okay, so I'm going to be going back with another character preset that just says Double X Art Character Base. And that should do it. Yes. And then just real quickly, we'll go through the process of uh, Vampire Executioner. We don't need the whole outfit. So we will apply the top, the shoes, the pants. And the overcoat. Now I believe there's a little. Uh, actually, sorry about that, guys. Um, let's see if the pants. Let's turn the coat off for a second. The pants have the uh, little spikes built on there, so that's what, just what I was checking. Um, and then we need to apply the hair. And we're going to go with. Uh, of course, I'm not seeing Fraser hair here. So let's pop over into smart content. It may not be a G3 hair. Oh, I did not notice. Installed. Hair. There it is. Fraser hair. That should be fine. Oh my goodness. Okay, it looks like we've got the basis of double axe arts. I'll um, pop over to the axes. And it looks like we're using the bearded axe. Yes. So that one's the wearable, but it's only for the right hand. So then we will also use the prop version which hopefully would not be stuck to the right hand we need to put it in the left hand and uh, I was actually wrong about that it actually was parented all these little things you know no such thing as a make art button <laughs> But this is about as close as you can get, this program in general. Okay. I tried to get a buddy to uh, join me for this, but he completely uh, shot me down. Didn't like, didn't like working with other people's stuff, he says. 
I can make all my own stuff, I guess I might be the same way. So we'll go back to hand poses, if they have them. No hand poses, but I know what does have hand poses. And that is... Um, the Valborg poses. that for now. So the last thing we're missing is the scarf and that we know is on the DM suit which I believe is a Genesis uh, 3, a Genesis 2 clothing item guys. So we're gonna pop down clothing Hmm, interesting. Let's go over here. Make sure we have our figure unselected. Let's type in DM. That's smart time. Smart content's awesome when it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, which is a real drag. So we'll do that. And actually, that uh, fit right off the bat. Fit scarf two. No, it didn't. <laughs> I thought it did. And of course, it prompts me for the auto fit. But if you have wearable, which you should have, it works out great. So the original base was for Genesis 2 male. So there you go. We'll just hide that in there. And Art G3. I'm going to go ahead and change the name to Double Axe Art. Double Axe Art G3. Well, what happened here? Did I run out of space? actually never encountered that before huh I think I was trying to capitalize that double X R G three all right finally we are ready to go back into our character folder into our C for chaos because I'm gonna make other characters from this property and we're gonna just save a scene actually let me get a nicer thumbnail going here And <clears throat> Devil X Heart G three. And it occurs to me yeah, okay, we've got the eye ray on the clothing. I believe those load in with eye ray. Um, the scarf does not have eye ray, so it's probably a good idea to go ahead and hit anything like that that did not come with eye ray with just uh, an eye ray shader. Um, yeah, that way I don't have to worry about that later when I load this in. These guys all need to get the eye ray over base shader. So because I haven't changed anything, just save, and there you go. I now have a preset for the just the skin of this character with the more floated uh, from face gen, and then the full character. There you have it, folks. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with some other little tidbit to share at some later time. Thanks.